How does a conflict that seems to have no end continually find new beginnings? Today, we delve into the recent resumption of the Israel-Hamas conflict. A cycle of ceasefires and escalations, a narrative of defense and offense, and a story that's left its mark on the world stage. This is a conflict that's been etched into the annals of history, one that's seen the rise and fall of leaders, the birth and death of peace treaties, and the constant unyielding struggle of its people. Yet it's never been a question of if, but when, it resumes. Join us as we explore the recent events leading up to the resumption of this conflict. To understand the current unrest, we must revisit the events that have led us to this point. The timeline of this conflict is a complex weave of actions and reactions, of aggression and defense. It was on the 7th of October that the first threads of this particular tapestry were spun. Hamas militants launched a ferocious attack on Kibbutz Kavar Aza, resulting in a tragic loss of life, including that of a human rights activist's sister-in-law and several peace activists. The response from the Israel Defense Forces, or IDF, was swift and uncompromising. Ground offensives were launched, airstrikes and naval operations targeted Hamas infrastructure, all aimed at eliminating the threat posed by the militant group. Yet the cost of this conflict was not limited to the battlefield. The IDF reported the deaths of 66 soldiers since the ground offensive began, while Israeli strikes on Gaza have resulted in the deaths of over 15,000 people, 70% of whom were women and children. The international community has not remained silent amid this escalating violence. The United Kingdom Ministry of Defense has pledged to conduct surveillance flights over Gaza to locate hostages taken by Hamas during the attack. Meanwhile, the United States has been pressuring Israel to do more to protect civilians in Gaza, emphasizing that the protection of civilians is crucial for long-term success against Hamas. The human toll of this conflict is not confined to the borders of Israel and Gaza. Far away in Vermont, Hisham Awartani, a Palestinian student, was shot and is now paralyzed. A fundraiser has been launched to support his recovery. The suspect in the Vermont shooting, Jason J. Eaton, has been charged with three counts of attempted murder. Each event, each action, and reaction in this timeline adds another layer of complexity to the Israel-Hamas conflict. Each casualty, each loss of life adds another face to the human cost of this unrest. With this backdrop, we can begin to understand the complexities of the current situation. A period of uneasy calm was shattered recently, leading to the resumption of the conflict. A temporary ceasefire, agreed upon by both Israel and Hamas, had extended the lull in hostilities. This brief respite allowed for the exchange of hostages and a welcome pause in the violence, yet, the tranquility was short-lived. The ceasefire was breached and the reasons are manifold. Tensions persisted, fueled by unresolved issues and deep-seated animosity. A significant factor was Israel's unrelenting commitment to dismantling Hamas's military capabilities and ending its rule over Gaza. On the other side, Hamas, too, showed no signs of backing down, holding onto hostages and continuing its aggressive posturing. Despite the ceasefire, the underlying conflict remained, the embers still glowing beneath the surface. The relentless cycle of retaliation and aggression, the echoes of decades-long conflict were never far. The ceasefire was but a bandage on a wound that runs deep and wide. The violation of the ceasefire was a stark reminder of the volatility in the region. The tenuous thread that held the peace snapped, laying bare the fragility of the situation. Each violation, each resumption of violence deepens the divide, making resolution all the more intricate. The fragile nature of peace in the region was once again laid bare. The Israel-Hamas conflict does not exist in a vacuum. Its repercussions are felt far beyond the borders of Gaza and Israel. This is not just a clash of ideologies or an assertion of territorial rights. It transcends these boundaries, influencing international relations, global security and humanitarian conditions worldwide. The conflict has a ripple effect on international relations. It puts nations in a tough spot, compelling them to balance their diplomatic relationships delicately. We see countries like the United States exerting pressure on Israel to protect civilians in Gaza, highlighting the protection of civilians as a cornerstone for long-term success against Hamas. Then there's the UK, conducting surveillance flights over Gaza to locate hostages, a testament to the international dimensions of the crisis. But this isn't just about diplomacy, it's about global security too. The conflict fuels instability, creating a breeding ground for extremism and radicalization. It's a powder keg, not just for the Middle East, but for the world at large. 
The instability it creates reverberates around the globe, posing threats to peace and security in ways that are often hard to predict. And we can't forget the humanitarian implications. They're massive. 15,207 people dead, with 70% of the casualties being women and children. This is a stark reminder of the human cost of conflict, a cost borne not just by those directly involved, but by the world that stands witness. The role of international bodies and nations in this crisis is paramount. Their actions, or lack thereof, shape the course of the conflict and its potential consequences for the region's future. Whether it's through diplomatic pressure, humanitarian aid, or interventions, their involvement is crucial in steering the conflict towards resolution. As we observe the unfolding events, we are reminded that the Israel-Hamas conflict is not just a regional issue, but a global concern. It's a stark reminder that in our interconnected world, no conflict is isolated, and its impact resonates far beyond its epicenter.